Chapter 25. It's not hard to convince mom. As soon as I tell her I want to go to a friend's house, she agrees to drive me over that evening. Anything to get me out of the house, anything to distract us. After confirming with Ricky's dad, she says, I'm so glad you're connecting with your peers, which is an over the top way of saying, I'm glad you have friends and is almost the most mom sentence of all times. As we get closer to Ricky's, the shape of the town starts to change. The houses get bigger and the paint fresher. This side of town seems to expand, like Halani's side was a shrunken down, forgotten version. Ricky Everett, Mom murmurs, double checking the address on her phone. I know his family. You know his dad? I wonder if he was always scary or if he just got that way when he grew up. But I'm not sure how to ask. Sort of. His dad's a few years younger than me, so we went to high school at the same time, but we weren't really friends. His family owns the paper mill, though, where most of the business in town is, so everyone knew of them. I know it shouldn't matter, but it still makes me a, takes me a second to adjust. Ricky's rich? I'm not sure how that changes my perception of him, but I feel like it does just a little bit. Our car putters into the long driveway, past bushes shaped like rabbits and cats. I've never seen anything like that, and I'm fascinated. They reshaped nature just because they wanted to. This is a lot, Mom murmurs. Isn't it? I nod, gazing up at the house that is more of a mansion. There are two spiral stone columns framing the front door, and the big windows are covered with dark velvet curtains. If Almani's house is a witch at the top of the hill, this house is a stuffy lady who works in a fancy museum and says, shush and don't touch and step back. <laughs> I can't picture Ricky in this house at all. Mom parks and then grabs my hand before I can get out. Call me as soon as you're ready to come home. If you're feeling upset or anything, I don't want you to feel guilty for being happy, but I don't want you to feel like you have to be happy either. My throat gets tight. So I just nod. We walk up to the front door and ring the doorbell. Instead of chiming, this doorbell starts playing classical music. I didn't know they could do that, I whisper to Mom. She fights back a smile. I think it's Bach. Ricky's dad answers the door. He's wearing a button-down shirt and khakis, looking very much put together for a Friday evening. I just want to stare at my shoes and disappear because I am grocery store girl. But I force myself to be brave. I look up at him. He smiles. He doesn't seem like a bad person, but maybe he's in disguise. You must be Lily. It's nice to officially meet you. I'm Rick. I blink. I know a lot of dads name their sons after themselves, but I still find it strange. <laughs> Mom nudges me and I clear my throat. Nice to meet you, I say in my extra polite voice. And Joan Koo, he opens the door wider, inviting us in. Long time no see. It's Reeves now, Mom says. She grimaces, smiles, and hunches her shoulders, which is weird for her. Here she seems small. We step inside, and no surprise, the living room is just as grand as the outside of the house. Its theme seems to be red, because there are red throw pillows on the red couch, red velvet curtains, and a red oriental rug. You have a beautiful home, Mom says, her voice stilted and overly formal. Ricky's dad shrugs, almost embarrassed. My grandparents built the place. I suck in a breath because the house just got way more interesting. The same ones who, I remember too late that Ricky wasn't supposed to tell people about the tiger hunting. So I swallow my words. Are Ricky's great grandparents? I finish awkwardly. Now I really want to disappear. He gives me a weird look. But it's not an unkind one. <laughs> more of the classic kids? look that adults seem to love. Mom rubs my back, probably assuming I'm shaken up after what happened at lunch. I guess she's not wrong. Ricky walks into the room wearing a black beanie with cat ears. Lily, come on, he says, gesturing for me to follow. Remember to call me when you're done, Mom says, holding her arm out like she wants to grab onto me and hang on forever. I give her a little wave and leave the parents as they small make small talk about how long have you been in town and just moved back looking for work. I want to take in the bigness of the house, but Ricky fast walks through it, leading me out of the living room and past a series of other living rooms. 
This is a living room with a flat screen TV, a living room with a pool table, a blue living room, and a yellow one. I try to peek into each one, secretly searching for evidence of tiger hunting, but I find nothing except for fancy art and furniture. Sorry about the house, Ricky says. Don't apologize. It's nice, I say, like a museum. He makes a face and I feel bad. I remember what he said about my house and I don't want to offend him. Now, I'm not sure if he was surprised by the strangeness of my home or the coziness of it. Almani's house feels safe and warm. Ricky's feels like you've got, you'll get yelled at for making a mess. Sorry, never mind, I say as he legs me into the kitchen. It's cool that you're getting so into this, he says. Are you going to help with the poster making tomorrow too? I stare at him. What? For the bake sale, he explains. Isn't that why we're making these cakes? Um, I opened and closed my mouth. I told him I needed to bake something. So, of course, that's the conclusion he drew. Right. Yep, that is. Yes. He laughs. You're strange. Oh, but not in a bad way. He clears his throat and looks like he's not sure what to say. It's an interesting way. <laughs> Thanks, I say. Though I'm not sure that's the right response. Sam always says interesting, like, interesting in a way that clearly means bad. <laughs> but when Ricky says it, it doesn't seem bad. It seems true. I talk to tigers. I build magical traps. Maybe I am interesting. He throws open a pantry that is bigger than our bathroom. Everything is color coded and labeled. I'm not really sure what's in here, he says. Our chef uses all this stuff and I don't spend much time in the kitchen. I try not to show my surprise when he says our chef, but it's weird. I don't know how to make rice cakes, I say, realizing only now how unprepared I am. Ricky grins, I don't know how to make anything. <laughs> I Google a recipe on my phone and we start throwing stuff together, mochi flour and brown sugar and coconut milk. Only somehow the batter looks wrong. It's too lumpy and too runny at the same time and it doesn't smell like Kalmani's. On top of that, Ricky doesn't have a zuki bean paste for the filling, so we improvise with grape jelly. And by the time the rice cakes are ready to go into the oven, they look completely and totally wrong. Which makes me feel completely and totally wrong. And then I get that too hot feeling again and my throat closes up and we have to throw these out. They're bad, I blurt. Ricky frowns, but I want to eat them? I lift the tray and spin around the kitchen looking for the trash can. Sorry, no, we can't. These have to be perfect. They aren't perfect. They aren't like Kalmani's because Kalmani can't make them right now. And I can't. I just can't. Okay, then, Ricky says. He takes the tray out of my hand slowly like he might approach a wild animal. I stare at the tray. He stares at me. Are you okay, he asks. Still staring at the tray, I tell him, my homoni was acting weird. I don't know. Oh, yeah. He's quiet because I think he knows sometimes with the hard things, you don't want to talk about it. You just want someone to know what's happening. After a maybe too long silence, he says, my mom never used a recipe when she cooked. It turned out different every time, so we can still try these if you want. Even if things aren't perfect, they can still be good. I take a breath and nod. As the rice cakes bake, he distracts me by naming his top 20 favorite foods. Ranked vanilla and chocolate pudding each have their own spot. Until I blurt, you should study harder for the language arts test. I don't realize how mean that sounds until I see his face fall, but that's not how I meant it. Because I know you can pass it, I explain. You seem really smart, and you're going into seventh grade, right? So if you pass it, we'll be in the same grade, and we can be in middle school together. As I say it, it strikes me how much I want that. He looks up. If we were in the same class, we could hang out a lot and build so many tiger traps together. Well, maybe not tiger traps, but other stuff? He pauses and asks with hope sprawled across his face. You really think I seem smart? I nod embarrassed again. I mean, yeah, you memorized your top 20 favorite foods 
and you helped me build a tiger trap and you were right about the rice cakes being fine. He grins and tilts his head. Well, let's wait and see about the rice cakes. So we wait and see, and they're different. They aren't Helmani's, but they're still good. Good enough, I hope, for a tiger.